Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to talk about a new component in our library called Bladder Stopper, which is a type of processor for controlling material flow. To find the component, go to the ECAT tab, expand Web Catalog by type, and then click Processors. And there's the component. Let's now create a simple layout and test this component. So I'll click Feeders, add a basic feeder to the 3D world. I'll then click Conveyors, and let's find a simple conveyor. So right here I'll add this component to the 3D world and tell center and zoom in on the conveyor and let's change the type of the conveyor. So I have it selected here. I'll then go to the Param tab, General Sub tab and in Conveyor Type I'll click Belt Conveyor. I'll now plug the conveyor into the feeder and then click Fill to get a better view. And what I can do now is I can add and connect a bladder stopper to the path of the conveyor. So I'll go back to the ECAT tab Click Processors, add the bladder stopper to the 3D world, and notice plug and play is automatically turned on. So when I drag the stopper close to the conveyor, I get visual feedback that I can connect the stopper to the conveyor's path. So if I move it close enough, da -da -da -da, all right, the stopper automatically connects to the path of the conveyor and is attached to it, which is indicated here by this blue arrow. That also means when PNP is turned on, I can move the bladder stopper to a different distance along the conveyor's path, like so. I'll go and stop the component right here and now let's find out what the bladder stopper can do during a simulation. So I have it selected. I'll go to the Param tab, General Sub tab, and down here there's a property called Task and this decides what the stopper will do when its sensor is triggered. It can either do nothing, <laughs> alright, it can stop the part for a time delay, it can stop the part until it receives a signal to release it, or you can control everything using a PLC. So for the second option here, stop parts during a delay. Use the delay property to indicate how long you want to stop the part for. So in this case, it's one second. So if I run this simulation, it'll wait for the part to re reach the sensor, stop, and then release it. So once again, it stops it, and then releases it. I'll reset the simulation. And now for the third option of stop parts until release signal, the bladder stopper has a signal name listed here called release signal. And when this is true, it will release a part. So to simulate this, I need to add another component to the 3D world. I'll go to the ECAT tab, click conveyors, and let's search for a sensor conveyor. So in the search box, I'll type in sensor, and I'll add the sensor conveyor component to the 3D world. Let's go and just a view just a bit. There we go. And in this component here, it has a sensor and when the sensor is triggered it will send a signal and that signal can be used to connect to the bladder stopper here. So I have the sensor conveyor selected, PMP is turned on, and on the dynamic toolbar I'll click this command here called connect signals. This opens a connection editor and for the signal I need to connect I need the sensor boolean signal here and I'll go ahead and click the bladder stopper in the 3D world or I could use the drop down menu here and the signal I need to connect it with is called release signal there we go. If I click connect, everything's set up, and there you go. So when a part triggers the sensor here, the bladder stopper will then release any part that it has hold. So let's click close, and let's go and copy and paste this feeder here and connect it to this conveyor. So I'll select a basic feeder, right click, then click copy, right click, and then click paste. I'll turn on PMP and plug the feeder into the sensor conveyor. Now the speed of these conveyors is actually the same, so I'm going to select the sensor conveyor here, go to the Param tab, and the general sub tab for conveyor speed, I'll change this from 250 to be 150. And press the enter key. So now I'll run the simulation, we should see the parts be slower on this conveyor, but faster here. The bladder stopper stops the part, and it waits for this signal here, and yep, it releases it. So once again it stops, waits, and then releases. Let's go ahead and reset the simulation and select the bladder stopper. Now the final type of task you can perform with this component is to use a PLC program. So in this case, this component has PLC signals already set up for a connection. They're called closed stopper, stopper is closed, and part in stopper. So notice I already have the PLC add-on installed on my device and licensed. And I'll go ahead and click add PLC to go ahead and set up a PLC connection. And in this case, I'm using a Beckhoff TwinCat PLC. So I already have one running on my device, so I'll select it here, click OK. Now I need to give the signal names a group, so I'll just type in main and use an update rate of 10 milliseconds, and then click OK. 
And now I need to go ahead and connect or uh, map all my signals to the PLC. So I'll go and show you the program I have set up. So in my program I have a global variable list listed here. And I've actually used the same names that are in the bladder stopper with the PLC signals. So they're called close stopper, stopper is closed, and pardon stopper. I also set up two different types of logics. So I have a stopper logic here that uses a ladder program. So it waits for the signals and then uses a timer to stop the parts. I also have a function block here that basically is doing the same thing. And in my main program, I actually have it set up to first run the ladder program of the stopper logic. But first, let's go and connect these global variables to the component in the 3D world. So I'll minimize that. And what I'll do in the PLC pane here, I'll select the first item, scroll all the way down, hold down the shift key, and then click the last item to select everything. I'll then select the connect by name checkbox. And then that what that means is that any item that's listed here that I select will automatically be mapped to the signals listed here. So if everything's selected in both panes, click the converging arrow. Now you might want to double check your connections here before you add them. So everything looks fine. So I'll go and click add. And notice now all the signal in their maps are listed here in the PLC add-on. I'll click close and let's go ahead and test this out. So my PLC is already running. If I now run the simulation, it should automatically stop the part, wait for the PLC, and then go ahead and release it. So yep, there it goes again. So let's see this as it's running in the PLC. All right, this concludes the video. If you want to see more videos about types of components, just let us know by visiting our community at community.visualcomponents.net. And as always, have a wonderful day.